All right, well, listen, I want to thank everybody for inviting me here. It's, a, it's been a real big honor, and as most of you know, I came here because uh, it's not what I'm told, but what I really find out and discover along the way. And so I've had uh, lunch with you, supper with you, spent time talking with you in a very formal way to find out what really uh, goes on with you and what, what your uh, values are. For me, values are what really count. You know, I, um, First off, a little bit about me. 42 years now I've been inside the mental health system, which is a long time. I have schizophrenia, which is a very debilitating, uh, disastrous uh, form of mental illness. Hear stuff, see stuff, think stuff. You probably have schizophrenia. Okay, so I developed this 42 years ago. Sadly enough, I had come from Illinois and was kicked out of the state really in 1966 for having a mental illness really. I mean, in those days in Illinois, having a mental illness, you just spent the time at Galesburg Research Hospital. And that was about it. There was no kind of hope. There was no anything. And I returned to California, which I think was a, in, in some ways a good thing and also in some ways a bad um, mistake because unfortunately there was no aftercare for anybody who had mental illness in those times. And so what happened was that I, like many others who were put on the streets of America with no aftercare and no peer support afterwards, ended up high, drunk, and uh, really out of my mind. As a matter of fact, I moved to Colombia because I couldn't get high enough in this country. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I really took it out to the night. <laughs> and, uh, a little bit about me, why I could live in Colombia, actually. Uh, when I joined the military, I uh, joined to be a football player. I came from around Macomb, Illinois. And my dream was always to play for one of the state schools, Western Illinois or even Southern. I liked all the different cities all the different state schools here in uh, Illinois. And so I was um, <coughs> selected to be in recon, which is a very elite unit, uh, one of the most, probably the most elite unit the Marine Corps has to offer. And I went to school to school, went to Vietnam, was decorated, and was going to uh, be a career military person for the rest of my life. And after a year in Vietnam, I had a major psych break and uh, really lost it completely. It's uh, so strange now because I go back and have meetings with the people who I served with in Vietnam, and most of the guys I served with in Vietnam are under some kind of psychiatric evaluation themselves these days. But I can tell you in 1966, developing a mental illness in Vietnam was not a, a good thing, okay? And coming back to Illinois from the war in 1966, when the war was still popular and having mental illness was not a good place to be. All right, so next thing you know, I ended up on the streets of California, wandering around lost, ended up living in the National Forest of New Mexico. Really lost about 20 years of my life. Around 1979, I started to put in to go to college under the um, vocational rehabilitation um, with Veterans Administration. And by um, 1984, I was finally accepted. I got turned down three times as being a failure because I had mental illness. And the fourth time I got accepted and ended up getting two master's degrees and two bachelor's degrees <laughs> and graduating first in my class as an undergraduate. So my dream, my, dream was, my dream was really was always to work with other people who had co-occurring disorders or who had some kind of mental illness because I really had come to understand the mental illness wasn't like the movies, right? The mental illness was this low-grade irritability, inability to get along with people, uh, constant. You know, they don't make movies about that. You know, they make movies. The guy in the straight jacket is what they make the movies about, right? They don't make movies about all of us just grinding through life every day, not not able to get along with anybody and anybody, anywhere, any time, which is kind of like the way mental illness seemed to play out for me, and seems to play out for other people. So. During that time, I had decided that what I wanted to do was work with other people who had no illness. And of course, in um, 19, I graduated from college about 1988. So even in 1988, I remember um, the first time that I sat in the team meeting on the same side of the table as a psychiatrist, and uh, he was told that now I was on the treatment team. <laughs> remembered me as being a spare change artist. Now. <laughs> it's kind of a public nuisance, really. In my day, you know, uh, 
one that everybody, you know, give me some money. You know? I'm just saying, help the clown, you know. If I can tell my people to give me money, that's how we help the clown. So, so he kind of remembered me from those days. You know? Now I'm a degree person who's working on the case management team. So it was a, it was a, it was a big it was a big transition, okay. And so I had always felt that you know working with those of us that had these conditions was really my calling, you know, what? because first off, having mental illness I think really leaves us in a very distinct position. First off, irrespective of how disoriented and confused, hurt, angry we can get with this condition, and it is immense, okay. Besides all that. You got the public. <laughs> I mean, I, could, I have, uh, I'll always remember being in line and talking about my job, you know, my first job working in mental health and talking about my schizophrenia and how it didn't really bother me that bad last night and I was able to get back to sleep and I looked behind me in the line in the supermarket and everybody was had gone down to the <laughs> Nobody wanted to touch the guy with schizophrenia. They didn't want to get close. <laughs> Be real far away. So, so I always understood that there was this public uh, phobia, you know. And mental illness seems to be, I think, really the last great uh, human phobia. I mean, literally, I mean, any of us could clear a room just talking about depression, you know. I mean, you know I mean, much less schizophrenia. Well, I'm hearing a few things, you know. I have the whole place to myself. So I realized that this is a very difficult, you know, condition to live with, and it's even more difficult because the public doesn't understand it. Okay? The public doesn't understand it. So most of us have to go out and we have to kind of do three jobs, really. We've got to take care of ourselves. We've got to do a lot of self-maintenance and self-monitoring, right? And we got to, like, kind of do the public education because they don't have a clue on mental illness, right? I mean, you know, the people with AIDS pass this. I mean, you know, people know more about AIDS today than they do with mental illness. Isn't that true? They came from nowhere, man. I mean, you know, you guys been around since 37. Everybody, like, oh, yeah, he's got AIDS. You know? Oh, yeah, he's got mental illness. You know, the people, like, put us for sale sign outside. <laughs> Get out of the neighborhood. Well, let's not talk about it. He's got a problem. Which is what used to, that used to be the thing for me, right? So then we've got that, you know, and, and these are very difficult things, you know, for me to maintain myself, do the public education. The only way I knew how to really succeed in this was this each one, reach one, teach one model, okay? The only way I knew how to succeed in this was to bring sanity, stability, safety, and sobriety into my life was this each one, reach one, teach one. But to do that, and I think that Dr. Lowe found this out, and again, I'm just getting to know you, and I haven't read all the materials. I have seen the four elements that you know, he looked for, and you know, I was reading those with my fiance in Spanish last night. So I, I do get that, and I, I agree with that. The only way I know how to get through this life with mental illness is we have to read and talk, okay? Read and talk. Something about mental illness, if those of us that have mental illness, if we all just sit around and talk, we go on for hours, babe. I mean, we do not shut this thing down. You know? I, mean, I, I can wear out five professional staff people in an afternoon. You know? I mean,